So I just got these art prints in the mail. These are for my March Patreon rewards and I have one print and two stickers but I'm still waiting on the stickers. This month I decided to go with a flower shop slash flowers type of theme. For the prints I just wanted to do this little illustration with the quote no rain no flowers. This has been sort of like a self mantra that I've told myself consistently throughout the years to get myself through tough times and I just wanted to share it with my patrons in case it might help someone out there too. For the illustration, I was inspired by those vintage prints where you have the image in an oval shaped and then you have this like ribbon banner down below. I'm not sure but that was what I had in mind when I made this. Um, I really like this color combination and I tried to keep the same color combination for all of my rewards. So let me show you what the stickers look like. So these are what my stickers look like. I've never done a colored background before, so I'm really interested to see how this turns out. I ordered them um, from Sticker App and they're going to be matte vinyl stickers. I really like how they turned out and this bottom guy here is inspired by Leaf from Animal Crossing. You know, the little sloth who sells plants. He's so cute. So these are my Patreon rewards for March. I still have a couple of slots open in the physical rewards tier and I would be so so grateful if you would check that out. If you decide to join for just this month, I will also be very grateful. I will send you all my love when I pack these packages for you and yeah thank you so much to all the new patrons who joined this month I can't wait to send all of these goodies to you It's been a while since I vlogged because life has been a little crazy. Um, I mentioned in my Instagram stories that I might have to go home in October if I don't find work 
by April and a lot of you have been really really kind you send me encouraging messages some of you even looked at like job boards and job postings and sent me postings in my field hoping that they might help so I thank you so much I also want to shout out to my patrons who have been really kind and supportive during this difficult time we have a channel on our discord called mental wellness and we check in with each other from time to time and I feel like the past couple of weeks I used that channel a lot because I had a lot going on in my head and I just needed to talk to some people about it and I'm just really really thankful for the supportive community that I have on patreon youtube and instagram like I I honestly never thought that this many people would take any value to my word and my feelings so thank you so much um i don't have an update for you yet because everything is still pretty unknown but what i can tell you is i'm looking at other options to see what might be able to help me stay and yeah i'm just figuring all that out just been doing a bunch of other things to self-soothe like drawing and buying little squishmallows <laughs> i've been wanting to get like a mocat and kai cat squishmallow for the longest time but they're always sold out like i could never find the orange tabby cat and the black cat i think the black cat is limited my boyfriend said that there's like only 3,000 across the states and it's like probably sold out by now or some people are selling it on ebay for like 250 which I cannot afford. So for now, I have my little 5-inch Kai Cat here, who I've named Kaiko after my cat who ran away. And um, I'm just gonna keep looking for another little kitty that can be representative of Mosa. Mosa? Mosa? Hello. <laughs> Her back is so straight. <laughs> got some happy mail from my patrons this one is from Mel look how pretty these plants are oh I like this one so much it's like a propagated plant but then it's space in a jar <laughs> this is like a sticker sheet of all the inside jokes on the patron discord that's so cool Malin secret recipes Mosa fan club <laughs> this is so cute she wrote me a letter too Oh, thank you so much, Mel. I'm gonna keep this forever. Oh. 
This one is from Natalie or that one artist, Enre. And I'm going to open it. I hope I cut it on the right side. There's nothing here, right? Oh, oh my god, wow. Oh, there's so much stuff in here. Oh, oh my god. Oh, she made me a punch needle mosa. Oh my god. Oh, crying, sobbing. I'm so touched. Look, look how cute that is. That's Mosa, and she even made like a little thing up here so I can hang it up. Oh my god. I really wish I could hang things up in my apartment, but because I'm renting, I can't really put holes in the walls. But I am going to make this happen. I will like hang it from a clothes hanger or something. Ah, don't tear. I tore it. So many cats. Oh, look at little Dapper Mr. Froggy. So cute. I keep saying so cute, but everything is so cute. Look at all the kitties. She also sent me two notepads. Look at the little kitties. They're so cute. I love the way she draws cats. Like, it's very distinct, her style. And whenever I see it, I'm like, that's Enray's cat. Thank you so much, Natalie and Mel. Your letters really made me feel better. I love you guys. Kisses, kisses. Mwah. So I posted this drawing around two, three weeks ago and I really like the concept of this like lazy cat saying no, not today. The share was actually based on this flower cushion that I saw on Pinterest and I don't really know how copyright works with that. It's pretty like heavily influenced so I wanted to make this into a sticker but I want to change the flower that the cat is sitting on because I feel like this one is too similar. So I was working on this drawing where I have the cat sitting in a flower instead and I also turned it into a black cat so that it can be Mosa. Um, I thought the no not today thing was also really similar to BTS so I changed it to just no. And I don't really know what this will look like as a sticker. I don't even know if it's gonna print well so we're gonna do some experimenting today. <laughs> to create an offset for the die cut stickers and I've shared this trick in a previous video before but many people said that it's very helpful so I thought I would mention it again in case this is the first video of mine that you're watching. So once you have your design you need to make sure that your background is transparent like this and you're going to make a duplicate layer of your design. You can do this by swiping left and tapping on duplicate. After making the copy you're going to turn on alpha lock and you can also do this with a swiping motion. You're going to use two fingers and swipe right then you're gonna see this like checkered background on the back that means that your layer has been locked if you don't want to do that you can also tap on layer and tap on alpha lock that gets the same effect so once you do this um <laughs> my grandma just sent me a video on facebook she likes to send me random videos of like thai recipes it's so sweet anyways once you've locked the layer you're going to select a white color or whatever color you want your offset to be in this case i want mine to be white I'm going to select a big brush, I usually use the flat brush, and just color the whole thing white. Once you've done this, you're going to turn off alpha lock, either two fingers to the right or tap and undo alpha lock. Then you're going to duplicate the layer again. Go up here to the tools, select Gaussian Blur, and you're going to blur it around 10 to 12%. I usually go for 12%. And it will look like this. Tap on the layer and select merge down so that both your white layers are going to be one layer. Once we have everything in one layer, we're going to tap on the selection tool, make sure it's set to automatic, and then you're going to tap right in the middle of the design. As you can see here, it selected the cat but not the word no, so I'm going to make sure to tap right in the middle of 
all of these guys as well to select everything. So the next thing I do is drag my pencil from left to right, making sure that I stay inside the design. If you tap out here, it's going to select outside of the design. So make sure you stay inside. I usually go from left to right. And as you can see, the black is like slowly increasing and the number up there is going up. Right now we're at 12%. I usually go for 90, so we need to do that again. Keep going until you reach 90. You're gonna start to see this blue offset come around your design. That's essentially the white outline that your die cut stickers are gonna need. And I go up until I reach like 90, 91, 92. Sometimes I do 94 because I like it. It's the year I was born. <laughs> and once you have this, you're gonna go back to your paintbrush and paint everything white. Undo the selection tool, tap on layers, move this layer beneath your design and now you have your seamless offset. This is the best trick I've ever learned in the six months that I've been making stickers and I use it all the time. In the case that you have a well-behaved cutting machine and it functions properly, doesn't really mess up the offset, you can go ahead and save. For my little Cricut machine, he gets a little confused sometimes and he tends to cut images too much to the left. So what I do before I save is I make sure to make the offset go towards the right so that it cancels each other out and this is basically how I make the perfect cut. I have experimented with this enough times to know the exact number of pixels that I need to move the background in order to make it print perfectly. So what I do is I tap on this tool and make sure it's uniform. I'm gonna zoom out so I can show you. I tap down 10 times. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Every time you tap, your image moves one pixel on Procreate. So that's ten pixels. And then we move to the right, seven pixels. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh no, that's eight. Ooh. Okay. And now we have this slightly wonky offset that's going to end up becoming the perfect offset once it goes through my Cricut machine. <laughs> paper produces a lot of dust so if you look here you can see dust collecting on the tip of the blade and sometimes this can cause the Cricut blade to not cut as seamlessly as it should so I make sure that from time to time I just use a brush and just brush all the dust off gotta take care of your machine so they help you for a long time <laughs> This is so weird because the first six seems to have like an okay offset, but the bottom six, it's cut a little too close to the bottom. My Cricut is acting out again. I posted a photo of the stickers on Instagram and then I just knocked out for like three hours. <laughs> I just woke up from the nap and I just realized I never filmed an outro for this vlog. So this will be all for today's video. Thank you so much for spending the day with me. I'm sorry I don't have a proper outro. I woke up with like a really puffy face and I just 
didn't want to hop on camera but before we go i just want to give a little shout out to our sponsor for today this video is sponsored by skillshare and i'm sure you've heard me talk about them many times already but if you're new here skillshare is this awesome online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for people in levels beginner intermediate to advanced so wherever you are in your art journey skillshare welcomes you there are so many classes to choose from in so many categories and my personal favorites are illustration art video editing health and wellness and also photography a class that i would like to recommend today is called vector illustration using creative constraints to find your style and this is a class taught by hedolf or rick berkelmans in the first three lessons hedolf discusses how to use simple shapes in order to draw everyday objects like objects that are surrounding you in everyday life and i became really interested in this class because i'm always interested in developing different styles with this class i learned to illustrate objects with bolder shapes and bolder color palettes and I think it's really brought me out of my shell so I really really recommend if you're interested. The second half of the class also talks about vector illustration in the application Illustrator but because I haven't had the chance to purchase or learn Illustrator I've been using the tips and tricks that Hedolf teaches to draw in my sketchbook. Once again, I feel like Skillshare's creative community has really encouraged me to step out of my comfort zone and try different types of art that I had never considered for myself before. Especially in a time like this, I feel like adding something new into your everyday life can feel so refreshing. So I would really recommend you give Skillshare a look if you haven't already. Today, you can join Skillshare at less than $10 a month for an annual subscription. And the first 1,000 friends to click on the link in my description box will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium today. Thank you again to Skillshare share for sponsoring this video and thank you everyone for watching i'll see you in my next one bye